Now it's time to talk RAM and storage and preferences. Oh my. If I look at this image, it's a very large, very high quality image at 69 megabytes, almost 70. This is the indicator of your file size. That is how much space it occupies on your hard drive. Your hard drive is permanent storage. RAM is random access memory. Memory is temporary. It runs on static electricity and therefore it's very fast. And all the images we're working on in Photoshop are in RAM memory until you choose File and Save. Now since I launched Photoshop, this is the only image I've worked on today. And something important to keep in mind is the performance monitor of your RAM. That is the efficiency portion. If I look down here for the file size, to the right is a little arrow, and I can choose efficiency. I'm at 100% efficiency. But wait till I start editing. Now many people ask me, how much RAM should my computer have? Or they may say, how much memory should my computer have? Or they may say, how much storage should my computer have? Most laymen don't know the difference between memory and storage. I had a friend who used to say, memory and storage are like milk and gasoline. They're both measured in gallons, but you don't want to mix them up. Storage is permanent. RAM is temporary. RAM is very fast. Your permanent storage typically uses a arm, which reads and writes different tracks and sectors, kind of like a record player. It'll jump to different spots in order to find free space to write your files. So if you haven't optimized your hard drive in a while, it may be very slow at saving your files. What this brings me all to is Photoshop's best settings for memory and storage. And on the Mac, you could find that under Photoshop Preferences Performance. On Windows, that's Edit Preferences Performance. Now you'll notice I have a big honking amount of RAM. I have 32 gigs in this machine. So 30,000 megabytes is 32 gigabytes, roughly. My operating system and the background programs I'm running are eating a little bit of my available RAM. Photoshop, by default, takes 70% of your available RAM. So I've got 21 gigs dedicated to Photoshop. Now that's way above and beyond what most people on the planet would have. I recommend a minimum of 4 gigs of RAM to run Photoshop. 8 is better. If you do any 3D or video editing, 8 is the minimum. 16 is better. The machine I'm on here in our recording studio also does the recordings for Premiere and After Effects. And for video editors, 32 gigabytes is the bare minimum. 16 actually is bare minimum. 32 is preferred. More is better. What do they say? You can never be too rich, too thin, or have too much RAM memory. Now, for those of you who aren't brand new to Photoshop, who've been running it for a few years, you may have noticed that at some point, usually after a long day of working on images, you'll hear your hard drive kick in, the little scratching noises where it's working overtime. That means that you run out of real RAM memory for Photoshop to perform its tasks and it's doing things more slowly on your hard drive. I also have a ridiculously huge hard drive at 2 terabytes, but I have 1.7 gigabytes of free space. If I were to ever fill that up, which doesn't seem humanly possible, but can happen, I have mm, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 external hard drives, because <laughs> I have two of my own and some built into this machine. You won't have that. You may not even have more than one choice. But if you don't have a lot of RAM memory, a lot of this available number up here, or you have two gigabytes or less, you'll be in a lot of pain running Photoshop. Let's just say that. Even if four, if you're working on images this large, it may be very slow. So it is recommended that you buy a big external hard drive. They're only $100 or $2, depending on your size. And you use that as your primary scratch disk. If this one is big and empty, I can say don't use my built-in hard drive for the extra space if I run out of RAM. Use this big RAID drive that I have that has nothing on it. I don't need the extra space. I have a lot of RAM, so I'm just going to leave it on the default. Now the next thing this brings me to is a setting for performance. I find that 20 undos is not forgiving enough if I'm doing a lot of painting or cloning. 
so I set this to 40. It can go all the way up to 1,000, but I recommend you set it to 40. Unless you have little RAM, then you may want to keep it at the default of 20. And when I say little RAM, I mean less than 4 gigabytes of random access memory, not your permanent storage. So let's see how my efficiency does. I'll just start going nuts with filters. Under the filter menu, I can choose something like blur and iris blur. And this, I can put a shine or a highlight on her. And I have a feeling it's going to take me a long time and a lot of tasks to get my efficiency low because I have such a fast performing machine. I'm at 91% right now, but that's not low. That's still doing very well. You may also notice that some of my filters are grayed out. This is because it's a higher bit depth image. It has far more colors, far more data. So if I go to image mode, I can go to your average 8 bits per channel. If I take a quick peek at my file size, the document sizes, it jumped from almost 70 megs down to 34 megs when I switched from image mode to 8 bits per channel. That's 16 million colors instead of 16 bits per channel. This was taken on a very high-end camera by a very talented photographer, Ryan Su. So I'm going to go back to efficiency, and I'll run a couple more filters. Filter, and I love the newer oil paint. Let's make her into artwork. So I'll play with stylization, cleanliness, scale, bristle detail. I don't have to do a lot of playing. I just have to run a lot of filters. So as I hit OK and run more and more filters, at this smaller file size, I don't think I'm going to do a lot to harm this image or to run out of real RAM memory. In Liquify, I could do some funny stuff like make her nose a little bit smaller or pointy, make her eyes a little bit bigger. Liquify is the Hollywood skinny up tool. I can skinny up her arms because they aren't clearly skinny enough. I'm joking or being facetious. They are very thin and very tiny. But just to see what she'd look like if she didn't eat for a couple months, we could make them even skinnier. So if I click OK and undo and redo, yeah, she's starting to look emaciated. But I probably won't fill up that efficiency monitor. You should set this if you think you have low memory in your computer and watch it on a heavy work day or on a day where you're spending a couple hours in Photoshop. And if it drops very low, you'll hear your hard drive working overtime and you'll know you need to purchase more RAM. On my laptop, when I bought it, I had 4 gigs of RAM. I upgraded to 8 gigs about a year ago and it was only $130. So it's gotten far more affordable in just the last few years. So out of this lesson, I hope you've learned the difference between memory, which is temporary and fast, and storage, which is where you keep your files on your hard drive, which is permanent. And you've learned that you may need to buy more RAM to run Photoshop efficiently if you have less than 4 gigabytes. 4 is my recommended minimum today. 8 is preferred. And more if you do video or 3D.